Hey, you! Do you want to learn some Marxist Fabric Data Engineering skills? That's what this video series is all about. Welcome to the video, my name is Alexia and on this channel I cover Marxist Azure and Fabric related topics. And in this video we are going to start a brand new video series that is focusing on Marxist Fabric Data Engineering. In the beginning of this series you will just need an access to Marxist Fabric Workspace, but later on when we proceed to more advanced topics you will need an access to Azure subscription as well. This video is an introduction video to this series, and in this video we are going to go through what is data engineering and what kind of tasks data engineers typically perform. After this we are going to go through a brief introduction to Marxist Fabric and the tools that we are going to focus on during upcoming weeks and months. But now, let's get started! Typically, many organizations have many different software and systems that handle their day-to-day -day business operations. At the same time, organizations have been becoming increasingly more data-driven, which means that they rely on data and reports to do important business decisions. A typical problem is that their operational systems contain a lot of interesting data that could be used for reporting purposes. But getting this data out from these systems to a format suitable for reporting could be a challenge. This is the point when our hero of the story steps in the picture, the data engineer. In close collaboration with other experts like architects, engineers, other specialists and business owners, they design and set up a data platform for the organization, which will be the playground for data engineer or preferably team or teams of them. By using the capabilities of this new platform, data engineers can build data pipelines that will fetch the data out from the source systems to the data platform. Typically, data platforms have many different layers, which clean and refine and combine data to more reporting-friendly format. And once it is refined and modeled to a desired format, it can be offered to be used for reporting and other purposes. So, in a nutshell, one of the main tasks of data engineers is to build these pipelines that extract, transform and load the data. And this process is often abbreviated as ETL or ELT. Now let's look a bit more closely what are the tasks and duties that data engineers tend to have. Let's start with data collection and ingestion that we already touched upon on previous slide. This task involves gathering data from various sources, which can include databases, web services, online transactions, IoT devices and many others. Data engineers develop methods to automate the collection process and ensure that data is accurate and timely. Next, we have data storage and organization. Once data is collected, it needs to be stored in a way that makes it easily accessible for future use. Data engineers design data warehouses, data lakes and other storage solutions to hold large volumes of data in structured, semi-structured or unstructured format. Also, data processing and cleansing is a very important part of data engineering, since raw data often contains inaccuracies, duplications or missing values. Data engineers use various tools and programming languages like SQL and Python to clean and pre-process data, making it more suitable for analysis. Usually grouping all this logic together to a logical flow is called a data pipeline, and constructing them is one of the core tasks of data engineers. These pipelines involve a series of steps, including extraction, transforming and loading. Also, data management and governance is one part of data engineering, since ensuring that data is secure, compliant with regulations and accessible to authorized users is crucial. In many cases, data analysts and scientists need help from data engineers to make sure that the data is in easily accessible format and ready to be used for their purposes which means that data engineers act in close collaboration with data scientists and data analysts. When data platforms and datasets grow and demand increases, performance optimization becomes an important part of data engineering, since data pipelines can become slow or inefficient. Data engineers work to optimize these processes, ensuring that data flows smoothly and quickly from source to destination. As we can see, data engineers have many important tasks and duties that need to be fulfilled and in this video series our primary focus is going to be in just a few of these. And those are data collection and ingestion, data processing and cleaning, and data pipeline construction. So basically we are going to learn how to build data pipelines and logic to them in Microsoft Fabric. And speaking of Microsoft Fabric, let's cover a quick intro to Microsoft Fabric as well. 
Some of you might be familiar with Azure's platform as a service data engineering stack that includes setting up many different Azure resources and integrating them together to work in data pipelines. Managing all of these different resources can become difficult and complex. The newest solution that Microsoft offers is the Microsoft Fabric that basically combines the functionalities of these different Azure services to a single software as a service offering called Microsoft Fabric and its different experiences. Next, let's take a look at Microsoft Fabric a bit closer to understand the basic fundamentals behind it. As described on the previous slide, we are talking about one software as a service platform that aims to cover all the data needs that organizations have to a single package and reduce the management overhead. Let's first start with the one leg and what it is. One leg's role is to be a single data storage for entire organization and it comes automatically with Microsoft Fabric. So basically you can think of it as the storage for Microsoft Fabric. The idea behind one leg is to eliminate data silos that organizations tend to build over time. This means that organization's data is scattered across multiple data store and databases. If you are familiar with data lakes, you can think of one lake as one centralized software as a service version of data lake, which means that one lake is using the same very scalable and efficient architecture like the blob storage based data lakes on Azure side. And when talking about scalable and efficient architecture, we have to talk about the default data format that one leg uses, which is Delta. Without diving too deep into the technicalities of the Delta format, it is a very efficient and scalable format that uses Parquet files with the metadata layer and it's designed for big data processing and provides advanced capabilities like ACID transactions to ensure data integrity. With Delta format, users can add, modify and delete data in one leg with the confidence that the data is consistent and correct even across concurrent transactions. It also has features like schema enforcement, versioning and rollbacks, which are crucial for managing and understanding large datasets that change over time. The Delta format makes it easier to build robust data pipelines and simplifies the data management tasks, leading more efficient and reliable data-driven workflows. The Fabric platform enriches one leg with a suit of Fabric experiences that serves various data engineering analysis and science needs. You can think of these experiences as logical grouping of different tools in Microsoft Fabric and many of these tools found in these experiences are very similar to those tools that have been part of Azure's data engineering stack for years now. For example, under data engineering experience, we can find notebooks that are very similar to notebooks found in Synapse Analytics and Azure Databricks. On the other hand, under data factory experience, we can find pipelines that very closely resemble the pipelines found in Azure Data Factory and Synapse Analytics. In between those different fabric experiences and their tools and one leg, we have a compute layer, which offers multiple different options and interfaces to one leg and its data. Let's first start with the most native interface for using Delta tables, which is Spark. The Spark interface in Fabric offers a sophisticated mechanism to interact with Delta tables stored in one leg. Data engineers and scientists can use Spark's distributed computing capabilities to perform complex data transformation, batch processing and analytics on the structured format of Delta tables. Leveraging Spark's extensive ecosystem for scalable data operations, the most common way of using the Spark interface is via notebooks using one of the supported programming languages like Python, SQL, Scala or R. Next, we have the KQL or Custo Query Language interface. This interface offers a real-time analytics capabilities for Delta tables within one leg. It allows data analysts to use KQL to run queries for streaming analytics, monitoring and event-driven data exploration, providing immediate insight into operational data that the Delta tables capture. For those accustomed to SQL databases, we have the T-SQL interface that provides a familiar way of querying and managing Delta tables in one leg. This interface allows for leveraging traditional T-SQL querying techniques for data warehousing operations such as aggregations, joins and updates, maintaining the relational database experience within the fabric and one leg. 
And lastly, the analysis service interface offers an advanced data modeling platform that connects to delta tables, enabling the creation of complex semantic models. This interface is key for users who need to build robust, multidimensional data models for analysis and reporting on top of their delta tables, integrating them smoothly with BI tools and supporting a comprehensive analytical workflow. And now we have covered in very simplified way how the setup in Microsoft Fabric works. Don't worry if you didn't understand everything I just covered and some things were left a bit vague, since we are going to come back to those multiple times during this video series and cover one leg and its different interfaces in much more details in upcoming videos. Next, let's cover a few basic data engineering tools that we are going to focus on during this course. But before we do that, I would encourage you to hit that like button if you have enjoyed this video so far and subscribe to the channel for more Microsoft Fabric data engineering content. But now let's cover those data engineering tools and let's start with the pipeline. The pipeline tool in Microsoft Fabric is essentially a data orchestration feature that automates the movement and transformation of data across various services within the Fabric ecosystem. It's designed to create workflows that can efficiently and reliably transfer data from source systems, process it through predefined steps, and deliver it to a target destinations for analysis and reporting. Workflow in pipeline consists of sequences of tasks known as activities that perform operations on your data. These activities can include data movement, data transformations, or calling an external service for processing. The pipeline tool ensures that these activities can be orchestrated, scheduled, and executed in a reliable and efficient manner, enabling you to construct end-to-end -end data solutions that can scale with your needs. People familiar with Azure's Data Factory or Synapse Analytics pipelines find this Fabrics pipeline tool to be very similar to those, with some minor tweaks and improvements here and there. Pipeline tool and its different activities will be covered in much more detail in upcoming videos. Next, we have Dataflow Gen 2, which is a powered query-based transformation tool in Microsoft Fabric Toolbox. Dataflow's graphical interface allows data engineers to build data processing logic to data pipelines with ease and without doing much coding work. Also, data flows have an extensive set of connections to different sources that include many cloud services, on-premises databases, and SaaS applications. If you have been already using Power Query in other tools like Power BI, you will find the experience here to be very familiar to that. Both Pipeline and Dataflow are more or less low-code tools that have their limitations. But our last tool, the notebook, is free of these, since it allows data engineers to write code to do their data transformations using Spark and one of the programming languages that it supports, like Python, SQL, Scala, or R. Notebooks are way more difficult to learn and use correctly than pipelines and data flows, but mastering them can offer you a very powerful Swiss Army knife of data engineering to your toolbox. Typically, notebooks are being used for more complex data transformation and logic. We are also going to come back to notebooks multiple times when we proceed with this video series and show you how you can use notebooks as part of your data pipelines in Fabric. Now you should have a basic idea what this video series is all about, and if you are interested in learning more about Fabric, check out this video next. And now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.